that's all I got to say. Coffee County 21, Franklin County 20. We're back. Red Raider football rumbles last night. Great win, homecoming game. I'm Chip Ramsey. I'm obviously very excited. You're watching the coach Lee Davis, Red Raider football show. I'm with the coach right now. Coach, you got to feel better than I do. I know. I do. I feel great. I'm still a little tired. It was a uh, homecoming night, so it was a long night, but I couldn't be more excited for the kids. They all played outstanding, and that's, after the game, I told them, you all played outstanding. I don't care if you carried the ball 32 times or if you didn't step on the field because you played outstanding on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then was able to reap the rewards on Friday. Going into this week, I mean, <clears throat> Playing for pride, playing for your seniors, playing for the for the end of the season, playing for the program. Talk about the preparation this week. I want to know what went on, what was going on in the mindset of that team all week. Oh, you know, they just they played for the love of each other. Uh, I, I saw a tweet on Twitter from uh, Jeffrey Simmons, I think it was, before the game. It said, "Look, I'm playing for my coaches, my family, my teammates, and my mom." I mean, he just laid it out. That's what I'm playing for, and it, you could use that as a whole mindset for the whole team these last couple of weeks. You know, we're out of the playoffs, but we still have fun. I mean, I don't know that there's very many kids that look at each other and go, we got to go to practice today. No, it's, it's fun time for them. They get to play with their friends. They get to enjoy the interaction with their coaches. Well, we're having fun, and that's, that's great to see, even though the record doesn't show that we should be having fun. Well, I think last night's game was a statement game uh, for the program and for this coaching staff and for this team. Um, this is what Coffee County football is and is going towards and can be, and I think that was a statement for uh, for you guys. I don't know if you guys felt the same, but talk a little bit about that. Oh, we did. It, it was great to see You know, the young guys stepped up. We're having to play a lot of young guys because of injuries and uh, played another young guy on the offensive line this week because of a, an unfortunate accident with uh, – Nathan Henderson being kicked out of a ball game last week that was, you know, just fairly bogus. And we had to, you know, he's had to sit on the sideline and watch. So we just kept getting younger. I mean, we played well. I thought the coaching staff did an outstanding job. You look at the defense staff. Every time the defense came off the field, they huddled up, made more adjustments. And, um, you know, offensive line, Ben Coon did an outstanding job there. All the coaches came together and really had a great game plan, and we executed. And, of course, you know, the coaches have never made a block or a play in their whole life. We just throw it out there to the kids. They responded and uh, had a great game. We're going to go to the uh, to the game here in just a second. We're going to watch Coffee County, Franklin County, last night. Great win for Coffee County. 21-0. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Ascend Federal Credit Union, raising possibilities. Being a representative, at least for me, is about building relationships. I consider each person that I meet in Nashville as an opportunity to make life better for the citizens of this district. Ten years ago, I was a freshman representative. Today, I'm Speaker Pro Tem of the Tennessee House of Representatives. That's a decade of connections that have brought jobs and prosperity to this district. Who you know is vital. Who you represent, that's what it's all about. I'm Judd Matheny, and I approve this message. Hey, football fans. I'm Miss Tennessee 2012 Chandler Lawson and spokesperson for Second Harvest Food Bank of Middle Tennessee. One in four Tennessee children don't know where their next meal is coming from, and often their struggles are silenced. In Tullahoma, Five Loaves for Kids sees that need and ensures that hundreds of students are fed each weekend. But that wouldn't happen without dedicated volunteers and generous contributions. So tonight, I'm asking you to contribute to the fight against child hunger. Please visit www.5lobesforkidscharity.com to lend your voice.
need a part for your car that the dealer just wants too much money for? Well, bring your toolbox and pull the part yourself for huge savings at the CFC Auto Salvage Pick and Pull on Highway 55 between Tullahoma and Manchester. No walking through waist high weeds here. All of our vehicles are located in our graveled parking lot up on blocks with room to work. We stock hundreds of cars and trucks, foreign and domestic, new and old, with new vehicles added weekly. You can even search our entire vehicle inventory online. And if your old vehicle gives up the ghost, bring it by. We offer top dollar for your salvage vehicle. Open to the public seven days a week until 630 or until dark, so there's plenty of time to come by. That's CFC Auto Salvage Pick and Pull. change in two years, but not everything has to. With the Charter Price Guarantee, lock in low rates for two years, because sometimes it's nice to know what's on the road ahead. Welcome back. You're watching the Coach Lee Davis Red Raider football show. Coffee County, Franklin County homecoming. Raiders in all red. The big M painted on the field. Coach, uh, the field looked amazing last night. Big props to uh, Joey Bomsey and his crew. Um, and I'm sure I'm failing to mention some folks. Oh, yeah. you know, the, the grass is what blows my mind. We're, we may be the only team in the state whose grass is still green at the end of the season. I mean, it, they do an unbelievable job fertilizing, keeping it mowed. Uh, it, it just, the green grass blows my mind still here in late October that it still looks that great. Yeah, it's truly one of the premier fields. I mean, uh, the, the condition of the field is always excellent. You look at it, it looks like a college state, a college field out there. So, uh, Oh, it does. And uh, I don't know if you noticed our captains that came out. We had uh, Spencer Riddle out there, captain, 57. He he told me early in the season that we make sure every senior gets to be a captain at least twice. And so he told me at the uh, first of the season, Coach, I'll be off my crutches by the last two games. And I said, okay, well, I'll make you captain the last two games. And uh, he's still not off of them yet. Said he'll be off of them the last, the week after we're off uh, season ends. But I think he'll be captain next two weeks. Colby Kenny takes the opening kickoff. <clears throat> Quick screen. Not too much yardage, but. Here's a lot of yardage. Right here. That was a truck driver hole. I think I could have run through that hole, Coach. And oh. D'Angelo Rogier is gone. Absolutely setting the tone for the game. Absolutely. And this is one of those plays I wish we could rewind and you could see what Tyler King and Grayson Miller did there. Uh, here's two-point conversion. It was wide open. And uh, Meeker skirts in. And, and now we're up for eight. But back to the touchdown run. D made an outstanding run. The block from uh, Grayson Miller and Tyler King was unbelievable. They actually blocked the defensive tackle into the middle linebacker, into the backside linebacker, and uh, took out three on that one play. That was, that was outstanding. Here we go with the, the young defense we got there on the field. That was Justin Smith coming up making a good play there. And uh, the kids were prepared for the game and, and they had a great game plan on defense. And, you know, the bend don't break. Very aggressive type. Uh, I think uh, Co Coach Butler was, uh, was calling some blitzes at times during the game and, and, uh, and his guys rose to the occasion. I mean, some big stops here. Um, Franklin County does eventually score, but we're, we're we're with them. We're, we're like you said, bending up, breaking. No huge plays right here, except for yeah, it was a misalignment. That was uh, you know you, you can that's something that just can't be accepted. Misalignments. And here, Justin Smith, a, a junior force, busts through and, and gets a great block but, to keep us up eight to six. Big play right there. Uh, obviously, the uh, perhaps the linchpin of the game, a, a one point victory for Coffee County, and there's a point. Here's uh, our little delayed kickoff return, I guess. I didn't know we had that in, but uh, shows what I know. He, he thought he was in the end zone, and they didn't call it, but we get the ball in about the 24-yard line, so I guess Smithson knew exactly what he was doing. Hunter Smithson on a return, a good 29-yard carry. Raiders first and 10, I formation, give Rogier pounding for yards. One of some 275 we, uh, we think we have unofficially for D'Angelo in the That's game. What somebody told me last night that he had uh, 32 carries, 275. 
Peyton Meeker back to throw, launches one, just long. Coach, a lot of open uh, downfield. Uh, <clears throat> just a little miss there, a little wide throw. We go in the punt. But your passing game was open as well. I mean, we talk about D'Angelo uh, had, had a huge night, obviously, running the ball. But uh, the passing-wise, we had um, you had some lanes open and, and uh, made some throws during the game. We do. I mean, I, I can't say enough about our wide receivers. We, we really roll in about five wide receivers. And uh, Jesse Brown, Kyle Douglas, Jeffrey Simmons, Matt Ross, they, they all do an outstanding job, and, and we think all of them are capable of – you know, you can mix match all of them and not really know which one's on the field. I, I think they're, they're they do a really good job, and Meeker does a great job of finding them. Great he's, stop right there, Jonathan, Jonathan Lida. a huge stop, defensively, and that guy plays like he's there's ten an, times bigger. There's than he another is. good little penetration by Jonathan Lida, who had an outstanding night last night. Uh, Franklin County had a hard time blocking Lida. He was quick off the edge and and uh, looked good. Coffee County's defense goes. Forces a three and out punt. Franklin County. It's a good job there by Bombstein. Bombstein may be one of the most underrated players on our team. He does a lot of things that you just kind of, you know, you watch film and you think that's a great job, Bombstein, that you don't really notice on, on Friday night. Uh, he's he's an outstanding young player, and uh, I shouldn't say young, he's a senior this year, but we're just blessed to have him on on defense playing back there and being able to return punts for us. He's a smart football player. He does he does uh, little things and has that uh, that uh, innate sort of ability to, to be at the right place at the right time with things, which doesn't always necessarily mean speed or quickness, but just being smart. Yes. And that, where you are in the field. That was a great little screen set great up screen there pass. to uh, Jeffrey Simmons, and, you know, that, that got us where we were able to uh, – Move the chains a little bit. I got us back to where it's at least we're close now. Good catch there on the cross copy by Jesse Brown to, to move the sticks. First and ten coffee county. Give the Rogier. Stacked up. <clears throat> Good job by Franklin County. That was a little outside zone, and they got penetration. And uh, this sack here we're giving up here was almost sickening because we had a guy that was running down the field just wide open. And uh, if we could have just protected him for another second, it would have been six points. I mean, I actually think it was Jeffrey Simmons that was streaking down the hash. And uh, he'd have caught the ball. We'd have got on the scoreboard there. Great play here. This is one of those... Uh, Beautiful throw. He, he says he caught it. He said he bobbed it a little bit. And he, but it was one of those that once we ran that, we knew that we could throw comeback all night. And you'll see in the fourth quarter of this ball game, that certain play becomes uh, the game sealer. It was fourth and 11, and we ran it. And you'll see in a minute. But that comeback play, we ran all night long, and it was so good to us. Meeker threw it well. All our receivers caught it well. Franklin County puts the ball on the ground. Recovers. Coach, you're talking about playing with young defense, <clears throat> young aggressive defense. A lot of a lot of shifts uh, as we saw in the earlier series, but uh, of course, much better tackling. I'm seeing too. I mean, there's there are multiple red helmets on the ball at every uh, at every play on defense. Oh, we practice tackling every day. I mean, that's something that we do every day, but Thursday, and. Uh, you, know, you would assume we get better at it, and, and we are. And I'm just so proud of the defensive staff and the defensive kids. I mean, we've almost turned into being able to play two squads, one whole offense and one whole defense. And I think that really helped us here at the end of the year. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't know that, you know, Grayson Miller and Zach Watson may be the only two that go both ways. And uh, that's, that's a great feeling to have on a 6A program that you're able to do that. Here's the comeback again that we, we threw a while ago, and another great catch. And uh, Cole Hawkins hurt his shoulder there, and I haven't heard from him this morning. Uh, it was dislocated at halftime, so I'm anxious to hear how Cole's doing. But uh, that was an outstanding catch there that was able to move the chains. Into the first quarter, 
Eight to six, Coffee County. Raiders with the ball and driving. Good run there. Making his whole nice run. Moving, yes. Amazing run there. Pete never stopped. Any youngsters watching this should remember that's how you run a football. Middle of the field was a little wet, a little slippery there. We uh, we got a little slippery there at times, and there's another nice little run. And again, it's runs like that that you know people in the stands and people just look at it and go, okay, it was a two-yard gain. But listen, having them tackle six foot one, 210 pounds all game long, that, you know, defense that wears the defense out. There's another comeback nice again. Snag. Uh, great snag there by Jesse Brown and kept his feet in bounds and moving the chains. Uh, you know, offensively, you got to give credit to the offensive line. Uh, we were out without Nathan Henderson this week, who is you know that just makes you sick that he had to sit out a game. Great senior leader and. Uh, Willie Banks stepped in and did an outstanding job at guard. Uh, this is Willie's first game to start, and I thought he played probably one of the best games he could. Nice little draw we set up, and that, that was a new little wrinkle we put in this week, and I thought it worked out great. Rogier picks up good yardage, plus 15 or more. First and 10, Raiders back in business. Coach, you guys are finishing drives this week. We are, and, you know, and that's, that's the difference in this week and every other week you've seen the season. I mean, you look back to games like Marshall County, uh, Tullahoma, you know, game White County. If you finish drives, you win games. And this is how you finish a drive here. Beautiful run. Picking his way down to about the four yard line goes Rogier. Just finding green pasture. Stretching out 6 1 down to the two. Here, just pounding away, and it's runs like that. You know, like I said, give linebackers nightmares. They know they have to tackle that all night. And touch over and top. Finishing drives again. It was a key at the very first of the season, and now we're starting to be able to do it at the end of the season. It's just it's an unbelievable feeling. Perhaps it's that uh, beautiful checkerboard end zone that. Uh, Boy, the checkerboard end zone looks nice. I, I think I, that's outstanding. That's a lot of work. Morgan's kick is good. I tell you, David Morgan had an outstanding night. He, uh, his punts were dead on and didn't miss an extra point. And his kickoffs were, you know, laid exactly where they needed to be. And excellent kick right there. Morgan might have played the best game of his life. He absolutely on, did. Uh, Friday he had, he had night. A solid game. Kicking game was solid all around. <clears throat> They were pinning them on the 21-yard uh, line, 22-yard line. And the defense just stuffing it. No, oh, great job there by your, your inside tackles. Zach Watson running the football, making plays. Nathan Kimbrough in there making plays. And, of course, Lotta being Lotta. Good coverage on that. Great job there. Hunter Smith's in back and, and uh, making sure nothing breaks too long for us. Franklin County's punting again, Coach. I'm not sure how many times Franklin County punted. I want to say four or five times at least all night. But uh, again, nice Red Raider bounce there. We're going to get the ball in good good field position. Well, it's great to see they had to punt. You remember last year's game with them, they didn't punt all night. Right. So it was, uh, I don't know if they were shocked they had to punt or, or we were even shocked. Nothing going there. Rebels stack it up. Rozier, maybe a loss of a yard. This, uh, good job there. Set oh. up a middle screen. That, they're so aggressive on defense. We thought we had screens all night. We ran a bunch of screens. Um, we're in fourth down here, Coach. You're, uh... Fourth down, let the clock run down. We're uh, we're almost at halftime, so this is just our way of you know preserving the lead. Let's go in halftime and 
you know, make sure we have everything straight and all our adjustments are good. And, and that was just a way of, hey, let's run the ball three times, let the clock run and get our defense who's playing so great back on the field. Nice punt. Good Not job there, Dalton Carter. Dalton Carter is one of those unsung heroes for our team. He does everything he's supposed to do. Uh, great practice player for us. You know, Cumberland County last week had outstanding yard, almost 100 yards rushing. And, you know, you'd love to see him down on punt making plays like that. He's a good kid. He's got an engine that just doesn't stop. No. Franklin County deep in their own territory, trying to throw their way out of it. Connects here and uh, a little draw play for him, and we had it scouted pretty good there. And Travis Dixon, another young guy that's, that's been thrown into the starting lineup, that's responded and has had a great year this year. There, great job by Lada. Lada was just all over it last night. <clears throat> They're getting a sack. And they're punting again. Yes. Good job there by Baumstein to stay away from the punt and you know, just let us run the ball. Well, blocking the back penalty had us move back a little bit more. Cody House with a draw to end the uh, in the first half. Cody House, he's one of those. Out, again, you, know, you talk about Carter, how he's an unsung hero. House is the same way. You know, House has started for us on defense. He starts almost all special teams. You can't have a football team without, really, without House or Carter. And uh, it, it's just great that they're best friends because they they really complement each other well. A youthful uh, exuberance, a youthful uh, rise of uh, Coffee County's football team. A lot of young guys stepping up. Um, talk a little bit about that. That kind of you've got, you've got guys injected in here that are that have many of them never played before, uh, or at least at, at, in the high school level at this point. Oh, we do. You know, we've got a lot of guys that uh, that really at the first of the season we had circled that hey, these guys really need to play JV this year and get ready for next year. And now they're thrust in the lineup. You know, you look at a Justin Smith, Travis Dixon. Uh, those were two guys that we thought, okay, next year they'll be able to walk in, be starters with. Ben Jose is another one. Walk in, be starters for us next year. They really need a year of JV. Well, injuries, them outplaying people, they have they forced their way on the field. And it's great to see that they've got experience for next year coming up. And again, you can name more. You can name Cody House, who starts for corner with us. You know, our starting corners this year. We've been through Justin Mukai, hurt, be back next year. Dylan Parton, hurt, be back next year. Cody House, he's had to be thrust into it. Uh, this week, we had one corner on the field, it was Baumstein, who's a senior, and we talked about him earlier. We're just getting a lot of kids, a lot of playing time. And uh, it's it will pay dividends in the future, and, and that's great to see. Absolutely. So we see uh, Coffee Kenny leads 15 to six at homecoming halftime. We're going to come back, come back with just uh, some more uh, commercial uh, messages. I also want to thank uh, Rick Gurwey um, with, uh, what is this water? That's Porch the Q, water? baby. We the love Q, the man. Q, We now. love the Q water. Um, big sponsors. I want to thank the Donut Palace and I think uh, Hardee's too, Coach. So we got a bunch of donuts and biscuits and stuff. Yeah, here, we need so. to tell the Q people to holler at us now. We yeah. love this Q water. Yeah, we, we need bring some, some water over to the uh, field house over yes. there at uh, Red Raider Drive. It's, tell them to uh, see Coach just, Davis. Yeah, see, the Co Q. see the coach. This guy right here, Q water. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. You're watching the Coach Lee Davis Red Raider Football Show. Ascend Federal Credit Union, raising possibilities. Being a representative, at least for me, is about building relationships. 
I consider each person that I meet in Nashville as an opportunity to make life better for the citizens of this district. Ten years ago, I was a freshman representative. Today, I'm Speaker Pro Tem of the Tennessee House of Representatives. That's a decade of connections that have brought jobs and prosperity to this district. Who you know is vital. Who you represent, that's what it's all about. I'm Judd Matheny, and I approve this message. Hey, football fans. I'm Miss Tennessee 2012 Chandler Lawson and spokesperson for Second Harvest Food Bank of Middle Tennessee. One in four Tennessee children don't know where their next meal is coming from, and often their struggles are silenced. In Tullahoma, Five Loaves for Kids sees that need and ensures that hundreds of students are fed each weekend. But that wouldn't happen without dedicated volunteers and generous contributions. So tonight, I'm asking you to contribute to the fight against child hunger. Please visit www.5lobesforkidscharity.com to lend your voice. Need a part for your car that the dealer just wants too much money for? Well, bring your toolbox and pull the part yourself for huge savings at the CFC Auto Salvage Pick and Pull on Highway 55 between Tullahoma and Manchester. No walking through waist high weeds here. All of our vehicles are located in our graveled parking lot up on blocks with room to work. We stock hundreds of cars and trucks, foreign and domestic, new and old, with new vehicles added weekly. You can even search our entire vehicle inventory online. And if your old vehicle gives up the ghost, bring it by. We offer top dollar for your salvage vehicle. Open to the public seven days a week until 6.30 or until dark, so there's plenty of time to come by. That's CFC Auto Salvage Pick and Pull. change in two years, but not everything has to. With the Charter Price Guarantee, lock in low rates for two years, because sometimes it's nice to know what's on the road ahead. We're back with the Coach Lee Davis Red Raider football show kickoff. Well, this was scary, reversing field and, uh, you know, getting speed out in space, but uh, we did a good job of containing it. Kids were fired up at halftime. I mean, they knew that all we needed to do was come back out and just play like we can, play like we played in the first half, and this is our ball game. At what point did you guys believe that this game was yours, that y'all were really going to win this thing? Uh, probably we lined up in victory there at the very end. <laughs> it was because uh, the whole, you know, it was it was a dog fight all game. You know, second half was one of those. You know, we throw an interception for a touchdown. They make a big play here. Um, nice pass. Yeah, it was a great play and. You know, they're starting to move the ball and starting to make plays. And until the very end, we didn't really realize that, hey, this this is our game. I mean, this is this is us. We just knew that we were fighting, we were fighting hard, and our kids were playing well. Great job there, you know. Uh, Spencer Chumbo's coming off the, or Sawyer Chumbo's coming off the edge. And uh, Sawyer's played well for us. He's a senior, we hate to see him graduate. And, you know, we got two bookends there on, uh, on defense that we just we hate to see graduate. Oh, that was a gift. It was. It was. You know, I, we don't see a lot of that often where things always go your way, but boy, it did there. Big fourth down stop. Got the defense off the field. I think it was about here where I thought I, I was actually thinking these guys are going to pull this off. This is this, this. They could really pull this off. They're not going. They're not going to give them this game back. Great catch there, Grayson Miller. Miller from Meeker, beautiful throw and catch. Big yardage out to midfield. Coffee County back in business after a huge defensive stop for the Red Raider defense. Started a uh, new center this week again with the Nathan Henderson. Uh, debacle last week. We uh, we shifted guys around and started Dakota Westmoreland at center. And I thought Dakota played an outstanding game. That was that was one bad snap out of the whole game. And uh, but you watch him blocking wise, he had a man on him all night and I thought Dakota played well as, as well as the whole offensive line did. You know, you got Devin Walden up there and we've talked about King and uh, Alex Williams, who has come in as a sophomore, and you know, the first of the year, Alex was another one that we thought, okay, a year of, of JV, and he'll be ready to play on the offensive line. 
but uh, that's it happened a little earlier than we thought. Now he's playing great up there. He kind of brings the kind of brings the meanness to the offensive line, so it's great to see. That's great. Bradley Tobit, good great job, job stringing there. this out. Yeah, that Bob Steen came up and finished it out, but <laughs> Bradley Tobit's turned out to be an outstanding linebacker for us. And Coffee County defense playing aggressively and surrounding and wrapping up. I, I think it's the best defensive game I've seen all year. Oh, I agree. I think this is the best we've played. I thought the game plan was was outstanding this week. And uh, the kids understood it. They learned. They knew what they were doing. And, you know, with swing T, if you don't pay attention to everything, you're in trouble. And I thought our kids were focused. And the, the defense played well. I think Coach Butler was uh, firing the troops up. Coach, uh, some folks were telling me they could hear Coach Butler on the radio from the field. Of course. <laughs> Through uh, you the know, broadcast booth. <laughs> you can hear Coach Butler anywhere you are. I mean, I'm not sure that uh, people in Tullahoma probably didn't call timeout last night to figure out who was yelling. It was Coach Butler down here in Manchester. Good open field tackle there, Jesse Brown. Again, this was this was a, a just a back-breaking drive because our defense, we thought, played well, and they just got to a point where they were, you know, the bend don't break, and they just kept bending and bending, and Franklin County scores here, and, and yeah, I was worried. This is this is the part of the, the football game that I was actually worried because earlier in the season, if somebody ever took the ball and drove down the field on us and scored, we had a tendency to drop our head. And uh, boy, it did not happen Friday night. This did nothing but just make us mad. Uh, again, you look in there, we got a freshman in there playing a defensive tackle, Isaiah Burge. Uh, again, kind of the young. But that drive scared me there. I was wondering how we would respond to that. I'm looking up and down at some of your guys on defense, and you keep talking freshman, freshman, sophomore, freshman, sophomore. And I, I think these guys are playing now 6A ball, getting this experience. Game time, real field experience. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's going to be scary in a couple of years, Coach. It could be. It could be it, scary it could next be year. Scary. Great run there by Hunter Smithson. Uh, no, you know, Hunter Smithson is one of those suspects back there at free safety, hits anything that moves. Uh, he's got some of our receivers scared in practice because uh, he will come lay the wood to them in a heartbeat. I mean, we've had we've had a lot of receivers with alligator arms in practice because Hunter Smithson's back there lurking. It's a good job here by Meeker. Uh, you know, he was it wasn't open, and Meeker tried to run and make something happen. It's a great job not forcing the football. Offensive line bought him a lot of time to. Boy, this is sitting in here. Uh, Meeker gets hit. You talk about just bad luck. Ouch. I mean, uh, you know. Play that went for big yards against Cumberland County goes yes. for big yards the other way in a touchdown, Franklin County. And uh, we're down. You know, for, for the first time in a football game, they took a drive, went down our throats. We threw an interception. How are we going to respond? And it was, uh, it, it's nice to see how we did respond. But I tell you, having, having Peyton Meeker back at quarterback, you got a guy that's not going to freak out. He demands perfection from everybody, and he makes decisions that you can tell he's done this before. Yeah, Meeker, uh, <clears throat> Meeker seems to get a little better every day. I guess he, he's a smart, smart player. He's a good game manager, and, and uh, you know, like you said, coach, a guy you can you can hang a game on. You can, you know, I think back to my first year here last year when he came off the bench against Shelbyville and his eyes were just so oh. wide and, uh, you know, he had a little, little, little scaredness about him and now I think about what he's become and it's, he's, he's just, he's grown pretty good. And this play won't look like what it was. This was supposed to be a little halfback pass. Kyle Douglas realized that they didn't bite on it and did an outstanding job of not throwing the football. Uh, I told him that, even come off sidelines, he thought I'd be mad that he didn't throw it. But he looked downfield and he was correct. He saw it was covered and uh, did a great job of not throwing the football. Douglas, one of the uh, tandem uh, tight end duos for uh, duo for Coffee County, the uh, 
a, a fairly rare uh, situation where you have two very solid, very excellent tight ends uh, in, on a high school program. We're down. We're down by five. They got the football. It's uh, in fourth quarter. I mean, we, we win the fourth quarter, we win the ball game. Mom saw that. Defense fighting hard. Jordan Wilson still in there making plays. Jordan's been banged up all year, you know, as, as a lot of guys have. A lot of making plays. It's just nice to see these guys out there having fun, stopping them on third down, forcing a punt. Great job Great there job by Malmsteen. Again, another one of those elements you get with. Another one of those Bombstein moments. I mean, Bombstein just does his stuff. And here we come back to what worked in the first half. And, uh, and if it worked in the first half, it'll work in the second half. Here we go. D'Angelo Rogier breaks it. Touchdown, Coffee County. I, I've got to say, I, I, uh, uh, this is about the the point of the game, I was going full nuts. Great oh, in and out of his hands there. <laughs> Jeffrey Simmons would love to have had that back, but we can't give it back to you, Jeffrey. He's all right, he's here today. Look at these guys on. Defense back on the field, and uh, we're up by one point. It's 21 to 20 right now, and you know they're, they're they've got a great field goal kicker over there. So we were scared, you know, they get inside the 30 yard line, and, and it's you know, it may be time that they might kick a game winning field goal. But our defense is is playing well, and Butler's calling a great defense. The kids are playing hard. Great breakout. <laughs> Bomb stay yes. again. Great job. Forcing another Franklin County punt. Defense just pinning its ears back. Bradley Tobit with a uh, little, little punt return. I'm not sure. A little bit ill advised there, but it worked out. Very the much so. Yeah. So one that'll put another gray hair on you, Coach. Coffee County first and 10 back in business on their own 40 yard line. And of course, we run power. You know, if we bust one for 70 yards, you're more than likely going to see it the next 20 times. Justin Flowers getting a good blocks in. Fullback, Rogier, and his offensive line just cruising. Forward. You know, Justin Flowers is another one that sophomore, we thought he needs a year of JV to really get to where he needs to be, and he's been thrust in the starting lineup. Third and six, this is one of those moments in a game that, you know, where the clock's about three or four minutes left. You know, don't think you want to put the ball in the air. Uh, we we'll just keep moving, you know. We're moving the chains. Like I said, this is kind of one of those moments that I guess is the reason they pay me and I'm not sitting in the stands. Run the football, you're, you're in no man's land. Let's go ahead and try to take a penalty and punt. And uh, so that's what we did and got them pinned deep, and you'll see it pays off. There you go. Great punt here from... Well, it takes a, takes a good bounce, and you know, you're know you giving them the ball on the 25-yard line with three minutes to go, three or four minutes left in the game. You know, the pressure's on them. We've got the win, or we've got the, the game right now by, by one point. The pressure's all on Franklin County here. Lida again just eating it up off the corner. That pressure from, <clears throat> from those ends all night, uh, huge factor. Your defense is moving upfield. Look at that. And we get the ball back. 
That's playing football. Yes, it is. That, that's 11 guys running the football, making plays. And I can actually hear the, the crowd at Coffee County. They oh, you know, the, the crowd was, oh, it was great last night. You know, homecoming, we had guy, people come out, and uh, oh, it was great to see. And, you know, I'm sitting there on the headset right now telling them we need two first downs to win this ball game. And uh, nice catch by Grayson Miller to move the chains, and there's first down number one. And we know now, you know, one more first down, and, and, and we, we've got this. Scary moment there, but things are just rolling our way tonight, Coach. We get the ball back. D'Angelo with a another good run there. Again, one first down, and we got the ball game. They stop us up here. You know, they make a great play on us. Now it's fourth down, fourth and eleven. And, uh, you know, you look up the definition of clutch, and you can look at our quarterback and, and Jesse Brown here. Fourth and 11, first down, wins the ball game. We run a 12-yard route, great catch. Beautiful, beautiful pass. And great catch. Just like that, you can strike up the band. Coach, I got goosebumps again watching oh, there, it. There's not much of a better feeling than being able to hold up the victory sign that, all right, let's line in, let's take a knee, and let's have a great homecoming. Best play of the night. Best play of the night. Coffee County wins it. Man, you can see the enthusiasm <laughs> spilling over the field. Let me tell you something, it's nice to see those coaches and, and the players just go nuts. They've worked so hard all year, and uh, they deserve something like this. Absolutely. Hey, Bob, can we get these guys mic'd up? Wanted to bring some of our players up here in just a second. Uh, Coach, uh, you know, what more can you say? We, we've seen, a, um, we've seen a, a great win. We've seen some kids that have, uh, have gone through adversity all season long. We've seen a coaching staff uh, go through adversity all season long, perhaps under some, some fire, and, and taking a program that, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the more difficult uh, nuts to crack in, in, uh, in high school football. Again, I can't reiterate enough that, that uh, the sentiment that, that, that last night's game was a, a statement win for you guys. And uh, I want to bring some of your guys up here in just a second, uh, maybe D and whoever wants to come on up here and let them talk about it for a second. But uh, just for your guys and, and your staff, how, how satisfying was this win? You know, it was satisfying to a fact of, hey, you know, great win. Players did what they bought into everything they were supposed to do. Jeffrey Simmons is going to walk right through walk the camera right here. Walk right through the camera. This is um, real, real professional production, <laughs> Jeff. No way. Jeff, you're in. You know that. Scoot him, baby. Great job there by Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, I try. Uh, but no, you know, this, this win means a lot to us, but it's going to mean a whole lot more if we build on it and build on it not just next week against Cookville, but in the future. If this is one of those wins that, you know, our seniors look back on and, and even our freshmen and say, you know what, that's the one that started the run. That's the win that started, started it all. And that's when this is going to mean so much. Uh, right now, it was a great win. It was a homecoming win. Everybody's excited. Uh, you know, the kids are excited. Coaches are excited. To me, this needs to be the jump off. This needs to be the, the jump start of not just the season, but the program. This needs to be one of those that, you know, we, we talk about for 10, 12 years to come. Coach, this is your 19th game as a head coach, and I know uh, I know these guys have been uh, extremely loyal to you. They really uh, love the program, and uh, this guy uh, goes yard last night. Uh, uh, both of these guys have, have tweeted uh, uh, their sentiments uh, towards this program and towards uh, their their loyalty to you. Um, guys, I mean, you played for Coach Davis last night. Uh, any anything going on with that? You guys have, have constantly made that statement that this is my coach, this is my team. I'll, I'll stick with him. 
Come on, guys. What, what do you what, what are your what are your sentiments right now about the program and, and the direction of it and where you'd like to see it go? It's definitely going forwards, definitely, especially with that guy over there. Which guy? This guy? Both of them. Both of them. Uh, D, uh, last night for you guys uh, was was a big win. Uh, talk about what you guys were thinking about all this week and and uh, in, pre in preparation of Franklin County and and the big night that you guys had. Well, I can tell you this whole week I was out of practice here and there, kind of hip pointer, but you know, come out last night and you know they scored on us. And I looked at Coach Davis and he looked at me and I said, "We got to score." And all I was going through my mind through that long run is this is for my coach and this is for my team. And, you know, I did it. We came out to victory. Uh, the feeling, uh, it's got to be gratifying. I mean, obviously you've won football games before in your life, but I mean, last night's game, that particular feeling and that win, um, how does that rate in, in, in your time and experience playing, even going back to youth ball? Um, pretty big, pretty high up there. Pretty big, pretty high. It is. It's gonna go a long way with us, you know. You gotta look at the camera, look at me. You're looking down too much. Okay, just a little <laughs> advice for you, all right? All right, well, D'Angelo Rozier, Jeffrey Simmons, uh, uh, guys, great win last night. Thanks for being on the show. Coach, any final uh, any final comments before we uh, exit the? Yeah, uh, real important, next week, senior night, Cookville, we need a huge crowd. Uh, Cookville's number one in our region. Let's go knock them off. Let's let, don't let this game just be a one night wonder. We need the crowd out there. We need them to be loud, be proud. Let's pack the stands Friday night. Friday night, Cardin Gerald Field, Cookville, Coffee County, 7 o'clock kickoff. I'm be the there. Honey badger. You're the honey badger? Yeah. Okay. No, you're well, not. You, sit it, you sit it here. Big stuff's happening at Coffee County. See you next week. Love you, Mom.